Hello and welcome to this video on section 18 of the Offences Against a Person 1861 uh, video on wounding and grievous bodily harm. Now, this is the fifth in the non fatal offences videos. We've covered assault, battery, uh, assault occasioning ABH, and section 20 GBH and wounding as well. So, this is the last in the, those group of five. Now, we're going to just, when we refer to section 18, this is of course the most serious of the non fatal offences found in the Offences Against a Person Act 1861. And this is an indictable offence, which of course means it can only be heard at the Crown Court. And the maximum penalty for this offence is life imprisonment. So the definition, again, comes from a statute as opposed to common law like assault and battery. So this is whoever shall unlawfully and maliciously wound or cause any GBH with intent to do some GBH to any person or with intent to resist or prevent the lawful apprehension or detainer of any person shall be liable to imprisonment for life. So, of course, what we need to do is consider what each of these elements are. We're going to deal with the actus reus first, but then going to consider the mens rea. So when we consider the actus reus, we'll start with the unlawful, the wound or GBH, and this idea of causation. Then we'll we move into the mens rea. So what does unlawful mean? Well, it's the same exact meaning as section 20 GBH. What it means is there's no consent or other lawful reason at the time of the crime. It's nice and simple. What is a wound or GBH? Now again, it's exactly the same as in for GBH section 20 with a slight difference. Okay, so uh, meaning of the words wound to GBH mean exactly the same. Uh, GBH is a general term, meaning really serious harm or serious harm from Saunders. Uh, and a wound is a break in the continuity of the skin from Eisenhower, so that exactly remains the same. But we do need to consider the element of causation because, of course, the way the act is written is slightly different to section 20. Because, of course, what it means is inflict GBH or uh, to inflict a wound. So, of course, infliction just means causing. So, in terms of you applying the law, what you need to know is that the normal rules of causation apply. So, the before test, any multiple causes, and any legal causation as well. So, the actus reus of section 18 and section 20 are the same, except that section 18 covers GBH by omission, but section 20 requires a GBH inflicted by a positive act. So once we tell with the actus reus, we understand that that is pretty much the same as it is for section 20 GBH. So once you're familiar with that, it may be that you've got the same question and you're just not sure about which level of GBH it is. Well, you need to look to the mens rea and that's where you'll find out. So the mens rea of GBH then is we're going to look at this idea. You can either have intent for GBH or intent to resist lawful arrest. Obviously, note here, it's a specific intent offence, so recklessness will not suffice here. So, Section 18, GBA to wounding, as we say, is a specific intent offence, which means it cannot be committed recklessly. And Section 18 also covers wounding, wounding and causing GBA to win the resist in arrest. So, the charge will be preferred where it's easier to prove. So, for example, it is, of course, easier to prove he intended to resist arrest than it is to prove he intended the GBH. So the prosecution need to prove that it's the defendant's purpose to cause GBH or to resist arrest or that he foresaw this as a virtually certain consequence of his actions. So that is, of course, oblique intent. So in terms of intent for GBH, then we've, if we've got direct intent to cause GBH, then this could be example. You know, a defendant stabs a victim intended to seriously injure them. Now, strangely, an intention to wound is not enough. You have to have intention to cause GBH or serious harm, or really serious harm. In terms of oblique intent, this is obviously the foresight of consequences. So if the act of the defendant is virtually certain to cause GBH, and the defendant realises this is so, so that Nedrick test is satisfied, then he has the necessary mens rea for section 18, GBH of wounding. So in the Crown and Taylor 2009, then the victim was found with scratches across his face and a stab wound on his back. Now photographs of the scratches showed no more than surface scratches and it was impossible to tell the depth of the wound. Now the medical evidence didn't help in showing whether the defendant had intended to cause really serious injury. 
and the judge directed the jury that he had to be sure that the prosecution proved that the defendant had intended to cause GBH. Now, the defendant was convicted of a Section 18 defence, but on appeal, the Court of Appeal quashed the conviction on the basis that the judge had misdirected the jury. Now, an intention to wound was not sufficient for the mens rea of Section 18. It has to be intention to cause GBH. Now, of course, we've got a reduction of an offence. So, the mens rea, if it can't be proved, uh, if the going to be proved the word cause has been held to be wide enough to allow an alternative charge under Section 20, which just means if there's no intent to cause serious harm, then we can drop down to the Section 20 offence instead. Now in Belfon, uh, the defender slashed the victim with a razor blade, causing severe wounds to his face and chest. Now the court said in order to establish a Section 18 offence, the specific intent part must be proven. Now the defendant being reckless as to whether such harm would occur is not sufficient for the Section 18 offence, but of course would be for Section 20. And the alternative, the key difference here between the mens rate of Section 18 and Section 20, apart from the intent to cause GBH and no recklessness, is this idea of intent to resist lawful arrest. We mentioned already that this might be easier to prove, and so this may be the way a charge is laid. So intent to resist arrest. So this is either resist or prevent arrest of either the defendant or a third party. And the defendant must be awareness that there is an arrest taking place and this arrest of course must be lawful. So Morrison is a good case to illustrate this. Uh, the men's way here. So when resisting arrest, the defendant jumped through a window. Now the officers followed him, suffered cuts and so on in pursuit. Now, where a defendant is trying to resist or prevent an arrest or detention, then the level of attention regarding the injury is lower. The defendant must have had specific attention to resist or prevent arrest, but only needs to be reckless as to whether the actions will cause a wound or injury. Now, really speaking, there's no fear if they resist arrest for a Section 18 offence. And so we covered all of these elements. So, very similar then to Section 20 in terms of the actus reus, the difference is in the mens rea. So, you need to be skilled at spotting what the level of intent the defendant has in a scenario in order to pick what they're doing. So, you can look at the language in the scenario for, to do that. So, there might be, he really meant to do it, he wants to do it, or it may be the circumstances where it becomes obvious to you and therefore will be obvious to someone playing the charge as to it would be Section 20 or Section 18. Of course, you do this by practicing past exam questions constantly and uh, ask your teachers to, to check these. But apart from that, um, this is the end of the non-fatal offences videos. The next one is going to be on murder. Okay, so thanks for watching.